What's going on everybody? It's your boy Payne. Welcome back to another Street Fighter Duel video. All right guys, we talked about this in the last video or so that we are now having to look at some of these crazier holiday event fashion characters and we have two brand new characters that came out. We finally got an announcement which was awesome. We got it the day of which is also unique as we at least get it a couple days in advance but Jonin Ibuki who is a legendary unit is out. I checked out her kit. We're going to do an initial review on her. And then we also have ourselves Trendy Doll Sim, which looks pretty damn badass and is also a master unit that is also out right now. And then an announcement has been uh, created here in terms of updated notes. So the biggest things here are the two new characters. Honor Treasure is, is out now as an event. Street Art will be coming out. City Pursuit, Secret Training, and Trial of Justice. So nothing new there. These are all events we've had in the past. There is a missing stat for attack that has been restored in the fighter details. I personally never noticed it. And then six new puzzles have been added to Wonderland training. So if you go to uh, the training, you should be able to see that there. Okay, so a couple things to note here. Um, the Sorry, there's a shadow event here. So I want to do an a, a, a initial review of both characters. Okay, that's the main thing. And then we'll do a fighter's trial as well. Okay, so remember Honor Treasure is out though. So this is where you want to focus on getting yourself... Uh, personally, in my opinion, div tickets are probably the best for you. Street Art is also out right here. You guys can see it's it's now. Now let's see who the characters are. It's the same. Yeah, so it's uh, H-Hun and Sagat again. So really good characters to focus on. So definitely work on this and get that done. Honor Treasure is currently out now as well. And make sure your Starlight Genesis has been focused on. All right, so let's get into the characters themselves and let's look at what makes either of them unique and then also if they're going to fit the mold on your team. So let's start off with Trendy Doll Sim who actually looks pretty damn badass. Now, he's been on the uh, wallpapers for a while, and he's been out in the other versions. So let's see what makes him unique, and then we'll do the fighter trials after this. So first off, he is a master unit. He's a tech unit. He's a power. He's a, sorry, an attack class, and he's also a raging fighting style, which is most of the trendy ones anyways. So his super here is called Unstoppable Lightning. He summons lightning to strike all enemies five times, dealing thunder damage equal to 385 of attack. The first strike has a 100% base chance to do shock, which is great for shock teams. Each strike has a 20% chance to add an additional shock, so you can stack this fairly quickly if you have uh, pretty good RNG on that. So you can do, what, five times shock? So that's five stacks if you connect all, all of them at 20%. And then gain static defense upon unleashing the skill. Static defense increases damage reduction against melee attacks by 25% for 12 seconds. So pretty damn good for survivability, all right? So not a bad super. Now go, let's go to his passive. Uh, Hellfire Thunderclap. So Thunderclap, when static defense is active, so that's when you do your super, charge upon dealing direct thunder damage, stacks up to 100 times, that's a lot of stacks, every 20 seconds, all charge stacks, so all 100 times stacks, are converted to refill the super combo gauge, which is pretty crazy. Each stack is converted to two points of super combo gauge, so you can get a total of, that's, that's actually quite a bit, that's 200, that's 200 total if you keep the 100 stacks. Uh, Hellfire, when Flaming Shield is active, we haven't seen that yet, but we'll, we'll probably see it in the other move. When Flaming Shield is active, unleash Hellfire upon dealing flame damage, uh, dealing another instance of flame damage equal to 251% of attack to the target in an area. This triggers every 8 seconds. So adding flame and thunder damage now, making him a multi-threat. That's pretty damn cool. So level 2 increases the damage of Hellfire to 289% instead of 251. Hellfire has an additional 100% chance to inflict 2 times burn. So he's going to be great with just OG Dalsim. Really good with OG Dalsim. Each charge stack that is converted from Thunderclap can refill the Super Combo Gauge by 3 points instead of 2. So you guys are going to be getting quite a bit of support from Trendy Dalsim here. And then more DPS from regular Dalsim. So probably a really good combo together. Also adding in Fashion Blanca, he probably works really well with him as well too, right? So let's go to this one here, Flaming Robes. When this skill is in position 1, it can be activated. Okay, that's just fine. So this is a C1 here. Uh, gain a flaming shield that is equal. There it is. So this is a flaming shield. Gaining flaming shield that is equal to 200% of attack for 12 seconds. Flaming shield cannot be dispelled. If attacked while flaming shield is active, deals flame damage equal to 60% of attack to the attacker. Trigger intervals every second. So that's really good. This counter attack cannot result in a crit. That makes sense. Uh, flaming shield counter attack has a 30% chance to inflict one burn on the target when it inflicts damage. Increases flaming shield values to 250% of attack. Wow. That's really, really good. And the reason why this is good, guys, is because against bosses, especially when you're getting hit by basic attacks or really fast attacks, this could stack burn really quickly for you, especially in, in the in the events where it's like the, the battle lust ones where, you know, that, that whole combo where you do more damage if someone has burn if, or shock, etc. 
he's going to be perfect to have for those boss fights because he's going to do so much freaking damage, right? And then Thunder Flame. Attack all enemies with four strikes, dealing thunder damage equal to 66% of attack, followed by one strike that deals flame damage equal to 93% of attack. The first four strikes have a 20% base chance to inflict shock. The final strike has a 100% chance to inflict burn. So there it is again. This is going to be where he's going to shine. He's going to do a lot of debuffing with his dots, right? His shock and his burns. If static defense is active, the four strikes have a 20% base chance of inflicting an additional one shock, so you can get two shocks there. If Flaming Shield is active, the final strike has a 100% chance to burn an additional burn. So you can do two burns and two shocks per attack. For every one time charge obtained, increase the damage of the skill by 0.6% up to a maximum of 45%. So again, very, very good unit for stacking debuffs, especially dots. So very interesting to see how that goes. Um, for Fire Flash here, which is going to be his cars, gain 10 times charge and 40% increased effect accuracy whenever an allied fighter's flaming shield expires so you can see here it gives flaming shield to everybody when converting charge gain 35 percent increased flame damage and thunder damage for 20 seconds so this is when you're converting your charge from the passive to your super he also is going to get increased flame damage and thunder damage for 20 seconds so really really cool uh so hp bonus attack bonus crit rate and effect accuracy the most perfect setup you want for your dps uh, Blazing Protection gain 15% charge when entering the battle for the first time. So it takes effect, when, so the plus 5, is takes effect when the fighter is in assist position. Grants the assist to fighter one charge at the start of the battle, and every 20 seconds thereafter, each charge will convert to 50 combo gauge after 10 seconds. So, great way to increase your super combo gauge if you're looking for that. Uh, flaming Robes also grants Flaming Shield to the foremost allied fighter. Okay, so this here says now it's the frontmost, so it's not for everybody. Okay, interesting. Uh, gain 30 times charge when entering the battle for the first time. So instead of getting yourself 15, you're going to get 30. And then uh, unlock a plus 30. When reaching 20 charge, unleash flaming robes once. It also grants flaming shield to all. There it is. So you have to have the FS30, it looks like, for the garage mechanism to work. Whenever an ally fighters. Yep. So this makes sense. I, I don't think the cars will make it work. I think you have to have it on the FS30. To make it work first and then the cars will apply this here whenever an allied fighter flaming shield expires so interesting um something definitely to look at so make sure his fs30 is available and then the car should work that's kind of weird that they're they're dependent on that unless this actually does activate it and gives it to everybody so something we're gonna have to see in the fighter trial so looking pretty damn cool uh, as a fighter it looks like you will have to do a little bit of manual control and it looks like his super in is going to be required to make his c3 very powerful and his passive is actually really good too so overall very cool character very cool character so gonna try him out in the trial realm and we'll see how he does okay there and then lastly we have joni nabuki who looks amazing as a character this is like in terms of aesthetics she looks she looks so badass man look at that outfit okay so um let's go over her passive first so Rin, Pyo, Tu, and Sha, these are the different signs she gets for Ninjutsu. Upon unleashing a combo or super combo, she gets either Rin, uh, Pyo, Tu, or Sha at random. It is possible to gain the same effect repeatedly, which is kind of the iffy part here. Each effect lasts for 30 seconds and cannot be stacked. So Rin increases damage reduction by 10%. Uh, Pyo increases healing received by 20%. Tu increases crit damage by 20%. And Sha increases damage by 20%. Upon obtaining Rin, or any of the symbols... Uh, increased attack by 1% for 30 seconds, stacks up to 10 times, so you can go up to, what is that, 10% more damage. Upon obtaining Rin, uh, so you get 1.5% stack and then 2%, so you can get up to a total of 20% more uh, attack power if you guys have it at level 4, okay? Looks like the Ibuki EX move does not apply to her, because she would have had a level 5 here for her passive, so it doesn't apply, okay? So keep that in mind, it will not apply. Okay, so next up. The super. Okay, so deal damage. So this is Kage uh, Reida. Deals damage that is equal to 560% of an attack to a single enemy and inflicts one bleed on the target. If Rin is active, consume Rin to increase the skill's damage by 40% and inflict an additional bleed. So when the skill ends, there's a 25% chance to obtaining a, a 2 or 25% chance to obtaining shot, which is kind of good. So that adds an extra layer of of adding unless you have it already it can't stack so it won't make a difference consuming rin increases the damage by 60 percent. so this is where the rng kind of comes into play right based on your passive if you don't have rin your da your, your damage goes down by 60 percent. 
that goes down, but you don't add an extra 60% damage. So it's a little bit of RNG based, and this is, I think, going to be her biggest flaw, is the fact that she requires so much RNG, but we'll test her out to see how that works, all right? Uh, Kage Suzuka, so deals damage to equal to 284% of attack to a single enemy, then throws a Fuma Shuriken that deals damage, this is straight up Sasuke style, damage that is equal to 46% of attack to an enemy in an area, so a little bit of a single target, and then an AoE. If 2 is active, consume 2 to increase the skill's damage by 50% and reduce the damage bonus of targets hit by the Fuma Shuriken by 15%. So more damage, they do less damage for 10 seconds. When the skill ends, there is a 25% chance to obtain a Rin and a 25% chance to obtain a Pyo. Uh, consuming 2 increases skill, skill damage by 70%. So not a bad way to get yourself rin so you may have to work off of getting rin first from here if you don't have it from the passive and then doing your super off of that to make it more powerful and then obviously getting a po there as well okay suzuki flash that looks so badass um deals damage that is equal to 458 percent attack to the rearmost enemy if rin po 2 or Shar are active consume them to gain the corresponding buffs so rin increases the damage of the skill by 25 percent and inflicts a bleed Increases the damage of the skill by 25%, increases crit rate by 25%, or 15%, sorry, that's PO. And two is increases the damage of the skill by 25%, so everything increases the damage by 25%, uh, except for Shaw, which does more. It reduces the target's damage bonus by 15, and then Shaw just straight up increases it by 50% for a backline killer, right? Increases damage 527 of attack instead of 458. And then if Rin, Pyo, 2, or Sha are active, the skill ignores 25% of the target's defense. So, really, really powerful C3. Um, every single one of them increases the damage. Sha increases it the most, but everything else adds a layer of debuffs or buffs to herself or, or debuffs to the opponent. So, making her, again, very RNG-based, but pretty damn cool. All right, so the Garage, uh, Shadow Assassin. Increase the buff effects of Rin, Po, uh, and Sha by 100%. The increased portion of each buff lasts until the until the end of the battle. That's really cool, okay? After gaining Rin, Pyo, 2, and Sha at least once, each increases crit rate by 30%. Wow. Okay. So because they are random, though, and they can happen at any time, and they don't stack, again, it will be very RNG-based, okay? So there's an additional... So this is a Mantra Essence exclusive. This is her Joning Bracers. There's an additional 25% chance of gaining either Rin, Pyo... 2 or Sha at random upon unleashing a combo, so that's good. Another 25% to gain them, so th this makes it a lot easier, obviously, to stack them. Uh, takes effect when the fighter is in assist position. When the assisted fighter enters the battle for the first time, they gain either Rin, Pyo, 2, or Sha at random, and the effect will last until the end of the battle. Uh, recover 5% of max HP upon gaining... Okay, so she gained some HP there. There's an additional 40% chance of gaining either Rin, Pyo, 2, or Sha at random upon unleashing a combo, so this is increasing it even more. And there's a 100% chance of gaining an additional Sha upon unleashing your C3 Suzuka Flash. So her, her, her FS30 is a necessity. It just increases the chance to get the buff. So she's looking pretty damn powerful. Not going to lie. She's actually, in my opinion, the more fun of the two characters. But Dalsim may be the more important of the two. And of course, not to mention, she is going to cost some money. If we go to the mall here... I believe she costs the usual 100 something, but probably down to, there it is, 65.99, right? So keep that in mind. You can get her to SSS plus 5 right away, obviously, if you connect her to another unit that is an SSS plus 5. So you can get yourself a, fair, a fairly damn good unit right away. Uh, but again, we're going to test out the trials and see how she does, including Trendy Doll Sim. All right, guys, so initial reviews. Trendy Doll Sim looks incredible. Pair him with Fashion Blanca and Doll, regular Doll Sim or T Cami with Shocks, and you're going to see insane amount of damage. Uh, Jody Nabuki is unique. Looks like you're going to have a little bit of RNG involved. Unless she's completely maxed out, then the RNG kind of gets a little better. But nonetheless, very RNG based, but looks like a badass character with a cool kit. So, going to have to test them both out. So, initial reviews, both characters look great. So, good, good job on the design. Looking, They look amazing, and their kit looks really fun too. So, I'll see you guys in the fighter realm. We'll test them both out and see how they are. Initial reviews, both characters look pretty badass. Alright guys, this is Payne. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.